Well, Wikileaks is an essential part of the fourth estate in the 21st century. By providing a secure way for whistleblowers to upload material anonymously and by making source material available to the public, it strengthened transparency and accountability and democratised information. So it's used the internet to shift the balance of power between citizens and the state. Not all people like this, of course. It's David taking on Goliath. But there's a sense that things may change for the better for all journalists, that we will have more support perhaps in pushing the boundaries. It was sobering to hear Dan Rather speak candidly about his failure to do his job properly during the Iraq war. He said he didn't challenge the prevailing culture for fear that he'd be pilloried and his job would be at risk. Now, you have to ask yourself, how can such a culture serve the pursuit of truth? The mainstream media didn't do what WikiLeaks did. That is, they didn't provide a way for material to be leaked without exposing the source. They didn't provide this secure way of uploading material anonymously. It would have been regarded as simply too radical and too subversive. The system relies on prosecuting journalists who refuse to reveal sources and prosecuting whistleblowers. Also, the mainstream media have had very different priorities. They're struggling to remain viable, to come up with a new business model in a vastly changing landscape. And it's run by a generation trying to understand the relevance of new technology. WikiLeaks developed its own cutting edge technology. The information it published was free. Uh, all funded by public donations, a very different business model. Others now are, of course, copying the WikiLeaks model, but powerful governments are determined to shut down WikiLeaks and to crush its founder and leader as a deterrent. They're trying to criminalise the work of a journalist and publisher. This is where the real struggle for the right to know is being played out. The organisation has shown heroic leadership, ingenuity, courage and tenacity in the pursuit of truth. But you can't separate WikiLeaks from Assange. Like any organisation, it's very much the product of the vision of its founder and leader. He's paying the ultimate price for his conviction that truth matters and that justice depends on it. People with courage shouldn't be demonised. The organisation he founded has empowered citizens all over the world to better engage with democracy. The greatest enemies of justice are misinformation, secrecy, ignorance and indifference. Information is power. It creates possibility. Historical events are unfolding daily in the Arab world, events triggered by the unstoppable flow of information and the opportunity it affords for solidarity and coordinated action. Whistleblowers are often motivated by outrage at the cover-up of injustice and the price they pay is overwhelming. We mustn't forget the lessons of Vietnam and the Pentagon Papers. This is what happens when governments get away with controlling and managing information tightly. You can't have a robust democracy. Governments lie. We need to support those courageous individuals who take risks. If we don't support whistleblowers and their publishers, we'll get the society that we deserve. In recognition of the primacy of freedom of information and the important role of WikiLeaks and the courage of its co-founder, Julian Assange, the Sydney Peace Foundation earlier this year awarded Assange the Human Rights Medal for Peace with Justice. It's important that we support a courageous Australian, one who is now confronting the cost of that courage and the cost of his conviction that truth matters. The most powerful government in the world is seeking to prosecute Julian Assange under laws that carry the death penalty. The issues here go to the core of our democracy and of our decency, um, of our civil society. Our government is failing to uphold basic human rights, freedom of expression and the presumption of innocence. Occasionally people say, I support WikiLeaks but I don't like Assange. I think it's important to understand that we can't just defend the human rights of people we happen to like. 
We should be very wary about the new focus on cyber terrorism. It may well be a case of powerful governments giving themselves licence to crush the flow of information. It's shameful that Canberra is echoing the US. We shouldn't be duped by it. History has shown, in fact, that governments present the greatest danger to the world through du duplicity, sheer brutality and the failure to understand the basic principle that you have to treat others the way you expect to be treated yourself.